And if you can see these little brown dots here, that's all just coral and then lots of shifting sand too. All systems look good and then we're gonna go for it. I am glad that I put like 25 waypoints in because I'm using them all. Last time on MJ Sailing, we spent a few days at the secluded anchorage of Egg Island near Spanish Wells, snorkeled a shipwreck with over 70 species of fish, and ended our night with friends and a bonfire on the beach. Well, it is another beautiful, calm, and sunny day here, so we are about to get our anchor up and leave our picturesque Mediterranean-style anchorage here in Egg Island. And we're going to be going over to the very elite Harbor Island today on the northeast side of Eleuthera, and we're going to get there via the Devil's Backbone. And what the Devil's Backbone is, is an area of reefs really close to shore on the northern end. Um, this kind of gives you an idea here. Uh, so you come out the northern end through a channel here by Spanish Wells, and if you can see these little brown dots here, that's all just coral, and then lots of shifting sand too, which makes it a fairly dangerous route, and that one that you need to use um, visual piloting for to know if you're going over coral or over grass. And what a lot of people do in this area if they're not confident in their water reading skills is they will hire a pilot to run them over. It's just a skiff that comes up to your boat, ties on, the pilot jumps on and navigates your boat through it, and um, it's probably about $100 per run each way. And we have gone through two guidebooks now that do have waypoints in them, although everyone is very clear to say, like, this is just adrenaline. You cannot navigate it based on these waypoints alone because things are always shifting and you might be following a path that is no longer good. So they are very, very clear that this is something that you really should have a professional with you for. And um, it's something that we really wanted to do. And after being out for a few years now, we're pretty good in our skills. But one of the things that we have decided to do to make this transit a lot easier for us or us a lot more comfortable is since Harbor Island is the ritzy area we'll get all of these mega yachts 120 160 footers that will come through and either they've been through the path or we'll see the pilot come and jump on and that way we can follow them through AIS uh, zoom in really close and watch their path and now over watching about five or six different boats and marking personal waypoints behind them every literally like one minute is almost how exact I'm trying to get on this. Um, we'll mark where they've been and then we've followed countless others past it and they're all following the exact same route. So we figure if these 25 foot beam, seven, eight foot draft boats are going through this path, then us with our 12 foot beam and three and a half foot draft should be okay. So um, we have about a seven mile motor because we decided to do this on the calmest day we could. That's what they suggest is you know, like no waves, uh, good visibility with the sun, do it when it's high and slightly behind you, not many clouds in the sky because again, visual navigation is very important through here. And so we are taking this windless day and motoring these seven miles to get to Spanish Wells. And then we'll assess the situation again and get ready to do the devil's backbone.
we've just dropped anchor in an anchorage that's just before you come to the entrance of the Devil's Backbone. There is a channel that runs from um, the anchorage just outside of uh, Spanish Wells near Charles Island and then kind of comes around and drops you out on the north side of the island where you can either exit and go straight out or you can take a right and head east over the Devil's Backbone. Um, so we just wanted to get to this point to like check the wind again. Um, it's open to the water, so we're not really checking tides. And uh, it looks like there's a 160-foot yacht anchored right around the corner from us, and we think they went through it and they're just dropping for the night. So all systems look good, and then we're gonna go for it. So uh, wish us luck. We're on our way. At a very slow three knots, let me speed it up. Did we go there? No. So what I'm doing is standing up at the bow, kind of uh, navigating by visual. Uh, so going across, looking for different colored spots in the water, which kind of tell what the depth is, uh, what the substrate is. So if it's a um, if it's a sand bottom or grass or rock. So my job is to sit up here and point directions to Jess in case I see something that the charts don't have marked. Um, I'm the eyes of this operation right now which isn't the greatest idea, but oh well. So this bright water in the middle of this little path is sand bottom. Um, in this area, it's about 20 feet deep. You can, to the sides, you start seeing it go green. Uh, you get a darker color through this area. That's indicating that the bottom's either grass or a rock. Then we start coming up a little bit further, uh, a little bit lighter, shallower area, 
and then we get to the the green where it's actually quite a bit uh, shallow there typically a rock bottom then at that point so that's going to indicate that we have reefs or rocks over in this area we've got our clear little path right down the middle that's all sand makes it actually really easy to see where we are and where we're going and then over on the other side you can see that we have rock as well in the water it gets that dark green color um, or dark blue color the uh, first part and then it goes into green which again is light rocks so again we look forward and we can see our path where we need to go and you can see that there's dark green or light green on either side again that's indicating a shallow area um, in this depth it's indicating a shallow area and it's indicating that it's rock so we want to go straight down the middle there and uh, we're fine through this section then so this area up ahead is a pretty good example of uh, visual navigation in the Bahamas. Um, what we see for water colors uh, and an idea of depth. We can see ahead we have the sandbar and that is extending out and you can see the light colors. Then over on this side we have the green, uh, dark green of a reef. The beginning part of it looks like there's maybe some grass. Um, that's that dark, dark section. And then it goes into the lighter color uh, green where we can see that that's actually a reef there so we got to kind of thread through the middle keeping ourselves in deep water so we don't want those light colors over to the side um, we want this darker blue uh, where we're in right now is a beautiful sand bottom so it makes it very easy to see what's going on That looks like our entrance. Oh, it's beautiful. So Jess is steering for this dark path. It's gonna go there. She's doing a great job keeping Georgie and I safe, as always. If you had me at the helm, we would have crashed into a reef about three miles ago. So we made it through Devil's Backbone and we were able to do it all on our own without any kind of outside assistance, which is kind of cool. So it's funny because our book literally says, don't do it yourself just for the bragging rights. Um, but now we've got the bragging rights. <laughs> and it really, it wasn't that bad. When you first come out from Spanish Wells, um, there were a lot of coral heads that looked like they were close to the surface and you didn't want to be near them, but they were easy to tell where they were and navigate around them, but once you got past that first kind of hectic cluster of all these things close by, it everything opened up pretty much and it was easy to see where, um, where you wanted to be and where you didn't want to be, and we usually carried at least 15 to 20 feet under the boat the whole time. Yeah, all in all, it was a beautiful, beautiful ride over with all the different colors of water. I'm really glad that we did it. So let's get Matt's perspective from the bow. It was easy. <laughs> um... Yeah, I just had to stand there and occasionally point. That was about the extent of my job. Just did all the work. Uh, she's the one that got us here, safe and sound. But uh, quite frankly, I mean, it was it was no big deal. Uh, the path that you had, looking at the charts, looks like it's you know the width of our boat type of thing. Being there and actually experiencing it, it's seems like in most spots it's 100 feet wide plus and then it would get down and fairly narrow through a little section but it wasn't that big of a deal whatsoever the color was um, real important being able to see the different colors in the water to tell what depth it was at um, but beyond that even without the AIS track without the charts most people if they have some experience in the water around here would be able to figure out where to go um, AIS uh, it's automatic uh, identification system is what AIS is. It's the some boats transmit a position and a name and tell how fast you're going, so on and so forth, some pertinent information. But uh, what we're able to do with boats that are more of a commercial type vessel, big, big boats have what's called a class A AIS system. They're um, much more accurate than what like we have aboard, um, and they're 
they send out the information quicker, more rapidly than what uh, we do. So we were able to follow that. We could pull up in our chart plotter. We could follow exactly where the boat was going. And every 30 seconds or minute, Jess would put a little point right where the boat was. And then a minute from then, put another point, And that gave us breadcrumbs that we were able to follow. Join us for the next episode of MJ Sailing, where we enjoy ourselves in the very elite Dunmore town on Harbor Island, and start the process of getting ourselves ready to make the 950 mile jump down to the Caribbean, taking the route known as I-65. 10 Bahamian dollars left for us to spend, so find a bakery something and uh, blow the rest of our cash. All systems go. Yeppers. And microphone is on. Microphone is on. Cool. Hopefully, I don't want to stuff in my teeth. Can't tell through this little screen. Okay, well, that's good then.